This is a new task we are proposing uh, for next year. And um, I will give you the context of the, the project and the task. And then I will uh, give the floor to uh, Jenny, uh, who will talk about the, the work. And uh, I then I will finish with the, the two tasks we are proposing. So just to, to put into the con context, we, are, uh, we have a project uh, in the west southwestern part of France, uh, the Nouvelle Aquitaine, for those who know uh, the region Nouvelle Aquitaine, uh, about um, uh, action recognition uh, in sport. And uh, this project we, we have uh, together with the University of uh, Bordeaux, so the LABRI, the Computer Science uh, Lab, but also the sport faculty in, uh, in Bordeaux. And I'm uh, Renaud Petri from the University of La Rochelle, which is not far from Bordeaux. So here it's the local context. And we have a project about uh, recognizing uh, fine grain action, sport actions. And uh, the case of study we are using is uh, table tennis because at the faculty of, of, of Bordeaux, for, of sports of Bordeaux, they have uh, students and they have uh, courses, courses on that. So it's a nice playground for us and we can have easily uh, ground throughs plus teachers, plus videos. That's the reason why we are focusing on that. Okay, so uh, the, the goal, what's the goal? The goal is pretty gener generic, but uh, it's to I improve the athlete's performance, uh, both for the teachers, so because they're at the, the sport faculty, they are teachers and, uh, that are uh, supervising the, t the students, but also for professional athletes. Here we will uh, focus more on uh, on the teaching uh, side with the teacher and the students. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, just to talk about the, the, the data set we, we have built, uh, the goal is to, um, to be able to, um, to, uh, to assess and, uh, and uh, characterize markerless, just using computer vision or uh, vision, uh, different action performed by athletes, and here, uh, table tennis players. So the, the goal is not to put any markers, as it's, uh, it's uh, usually done, but uh, we want to use that for, in order that the, um, the students or the athletes perform in natural condition. And in a, long in a longer term, we wanted that to, to be applied uh, for, uh, in a for everyday people uh, in a um, ecolo so-called ecological situation, which means uh, when you're in sports fields or wherever. So that's why we are only focused on, on vision and uh, without any marker. And the goal would be to, to uh, extract with fine grain the different action, knowing that uh, contrary to uh, general data sets such as uh, UCF's 101 or others, uh, we have a, a great a low intra-class variability in the different strokes we're going to present for the, the players. Yeah, speed up. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the goal here is uh, this kind of video we, we have filmed. And we, we have two main goals. First, the first goal would be to extract temporarily the, s the different strokes. So that we will have 21 strokes. And we wa want to, to be able to say when it does it start, when does it stop. This is would be the first step, the first task. And the other task will be, of course, to classify the different strokes. So uh, I'll give the, the ground to Jenny now. Uh, Jenny, I think you need it. No, it's just to record the stream. Ah, remote for this. Okay, great. Thank you, Marta. Okay, so generally speaking, action recognition in one of the most researched tasks of computer vision today. You uh, would agree with me if I say this. And action recognition in sport is also uh, another uh, specialization of this action recognition task. And basically speaking, there is a huge literature about uh, this. And uh, uh, with the arrival of deep learning networks, of deep uh, CNNs and LSTMs also, people are applying them to uh, recognize different sport actions. So basically, if we take a very popular corpus, video corpus, which is UCF 101, then we will find a mix of different sports. We will find the running, jumping, playing something, football games, uh, different scenes of different, different sports. Because the goal here is 
somehow to segment the broadcast video. But you know very well that today in research to segment broadcast video, you have already pr uh, industrial products. So what can we do more? And in our case, this is a very huge potential today in Europe because the focus of European programs of H200, uh, 2020, sorry, and the next one is on human well-being. <laughs> and if we are speaking about human well-being, obviously we are speaking about sport. And thus, <coughs> here our goal is more to segment something which is homogeneous, something which is about the same sport. And doing this, we need to get very good scores on very simply recorded videos. To record such kind of videos, we do not need very expensive 3D uh, acquisition environments with markers uh, which represent some, you know, uh, disturbance for execution of sport gesture, psychological, because of course if you put a very small marker, physically it does not disturb a sportsman, but psychologically it would do it. And the second uh, kind of uh, uh, reflections behind is that when we involve sports student into such activity as recording and uh, uh, as annotating the corpus in a crowdsource man and so on, then we make them actors of this uh, let's say, studies and so on. And this is our goal. So basically, coming from this uh, research, which is uh, about different configurations of <coughs> inceptions modules and uh, uh, very deep 3D CNNs also, um, we uh, come to the conclusion that probably for our task, for the tasks of segmentation of homogeneous sports. Uh, the best term is the long-term temporal convolutions, which have been recently proposed. And so I will show you we built our system on this. Yeah. First of all, about the TT stroke corpus, which will be given to the participants of this task. Today we have 129 videos recorded with GoPro cameras at 120 FPS. And <coughs> we have, uh, uh, after the crowdsourced annotation, and here you can see the interface, which we have developed to involve students of sport faculties and coaches from associated and also teachers of sport faculty to annotate each stroke. So after this annotation, uh, we made some filtering, tweaking in this data because uh, we tried also multiple annotators on the same videos and then we have seen that uh, we have uh, some too strong variants on the borders of the uh, segmented stroke and also we have some uh, not errors but misunderstanding uh, in labels of the stroke inside this community figures. So we needed the training of the data and uh, we have now 1,010 for annotation. And we have 20 classes of strokes and we call this TT stroke 21 because one class is other. Mm -hmm. And here so you can see some statistics, <coughs> fixed statistics, and also mean about the annotation length. What does it mean annotation? It means that a stroke is annotated like something which it is about <coughs> seven, six frames in mean multiplication or mean uh, length of the stroke annotated between the temporal <coughs> and action length is a little bit higher if we count
compare uh, when cleaning the data, we can uh, visualize all this. So uh, the recording to this course continues. And uh, today we present you 129 videos, but we hope that at the end of this academic year, we will get uh, something about 200 videos. Because the recordings are uh, conducted by our students each month. There is a recording session and annotation session by students and their teachers. Sometimes they are different teachers, sometimes different uh, the reading teachers. Yeah, and here you can see the sample. And uh, in the in grammar uh, course, the majority of this content is what we call uh, scales in music and gammas in French. This, this is the repetition of the same stroke. And in a video, a student can repeat the same stroke, then go to another stroke. And uh, uh, basically, this is for training purposes. But the variability um, is still along a video can be uh, quite, um, quite strong in terms of the motion. OK, so next one. Yes, and uh, here are some insights on our own solution. We have proposed and presented at CBMI conference this year. Basically, uh, we said that <laughs> this is the uh, video recording in the wild, <laughs> and cheap video recording. So we adapt to our conditions, yes, and we segment in a very bad lighting and changing conditions the estimate of the flow segment moving objects because they have plenty of flows of motion and then yeah so this is about object segmentation and then submit this object proposal to our CME network which means RGB and optical flow and basically here we have uh, quite nice results on our courses and if we compare this with a uh, Korean teacher method, which is reproduced and retrained on our courses, then we can see that we uh, are much better. And this is not because teacher is a silly boy, but because the data are different. Okay. So, uh, what are our tasks? Task number one: strong recognition with temporal boundaries known. Please comment. Yes. Okay. It's more or less what I, we, we talked a bit uh, before. It's that um, here we focus on the easiest task, which is we give you this, uh, the temporal segmentation of the video. So you know that there will be the, an action, and one action out of 20 would, be, would have to be recognized. So it's really a, a well segmented. And you just have to classify the video according uh, to uh, 20 classes of strokes, which are pretty sharp. and. Uh, I mean, uh, most of our don't doesn't know uh, that there exists. Uh, if you don't play tennis, table tennis, it's, uh, it has to be uh, labeled by a, a teacher, a professional. For instance, I don't know, defense is backhand, uh, backspin. If you don't know what's, <laughs> if you ever play uh, ten table tennis, it's, it's hard to, to guess. So this is the first task. We've split the, the, the data set into, uh, well, 80% for the training and 20% uh, for the test. The evaluation metric will be the accuracy. And we will provide a XML reader for uh, extracting the annotations. So that what you will have to submit is the XML file. And the goal, once again, is to find the, the proper class for each temporal segment, so you don't deal with the segmentation. The second task thank you, Jenny, will be now to uh, first to, of course, to, to give the class of the, of the stroke, but also to give the temporal segmentation with a tolerance of 10% for the, the borders. Uh, the, so the start, the starting of the gesture and the ending of the, the gesture. So it's much more complicated because even the professional, the teacher, don't really agree on uh, when does a uh, stroke starts and when does it end. So this is the tricky, tricky task. Okay. And what we will uh, give to the participants will be, of course, the videos. They will be uh, soon on, yes, over. 
but also uh, we will uh, give them a, a validation file, you know, a, a DTD file, so they can uh, uh, validate their the, the XML file they will submit for the for the task. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention. And uh, just last remark. We are only at the beginning. For this content, we have all permissions of national commissions of liberties in informatics, so this corpus is freely usable. But today, we are negotiating with a company which has recorded a very big and annotated a very big corpus for judo. So further we go, we can go for more sports in the same ecological concept and in the same concept of recognition of unique sport. Your questions, please. 